Up You community. Welcome to another episode of Up You with Izine. I woke up this morning with a song humming under my breath. I have a feeling that today is going to be a good day and it's indeed turning up like that. Ah, how you all doing? I hope you all enjoying the cool weather the rain is serenading us with lately. I don't know about you, but for me, I'll take the cool over the heat any day. <laughs> it's stack up season and today we're looking at women stack up that's right all through september we'll talk about the power of stack up from different perspectives it's the hour on radio and i'm here to keep you company wherever you may be so let's do this my beautiful people finding self finding purpose my name is is in and i'm your host <laughs> Chronicling your journey, keeping a record of your path, your wins, your fails, your all as a reference material for your sake and posterity. We are made up of stories and we are the stories we stack up. Stacking up helps you to examine and re-examine how well or how bad you have come and also helps you to know how, know the all important what to do next. If you want to know how to stack up and the many benefits of stacking up as a woman living in this fast-paced world of ours and much more, then stay tuned to Up You With Azine all through this month. Remember, dear listeners, that all episodes of Up You With Azine are now uploaded on our YouTube channel. Please go catch up. Take the nuggets you need to run your life. Subscribe and leave us a comment. It will help us to serve you better. Remember, it's all about you. Today, as usual, we're streaming on Instagram at Opie with Azine and at RadioGarden.com. The topic on the burner is Woman Stock Up. If you're just tuning in, you're tuned in to Opie with Azine on 98.3 Mainland FM. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> Our guest today is Mrs. Bimbo Oloyede, CEO Strictly Speaking Academy. She has been a broadcast professional for over four decades, having been employed by the then NBC TV as an assistant producer in 1975. In 1976, she became the first woman to cast network news on Nigerian television. Thereafter, she became an independent radio and TV producer, presenter, moderator, and compare. She and her late husband jointly established Media International, a TV production company in the early 80s, which trained several of today's renowned media professionals and produced many award-winning TV commercials. The company is currently managed by their children under a different name and has produced a TV program, Strictly Speaking with Bimbo, which broadcasts on several TV stations. For the last 25 years, Bimbo Loyede has trained students, teachers, diplomats, broadcasters, and other professionals in elocution, public speaking, and communication skills. In 2016, she published Strictly Speaking, Pronunciation Made Easy in response to their needs. Strictly Speaking, an oral guide for schools and colleges, followed in 2018 and has been approved by the NERDC and three state ministries of education for use by senior secondary school. schools. Today, she continues to write and speak at conferences and seminars. Dear listeners, please join me in welcoming a very beautiful, very intelligent, super, super special guest this morning. Good morning, Bimbo. How are you today? <laughs> Good morning, isn't it? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, very it's, well. It's really wonderful to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. Oh, God. Oh, God. You guys don't understand. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So, um, let's just go straight to the meat of the matter, um, right away, so that um, we can use up all our time. Mm. So, let's set the stage by you telling us what's your perspective and your understanding of the topic of today, woman stuck up. Okay, well, let's begin on a very light note mm-hmm. because um, there is a colloquial expression or slang, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, that talks about um, women being stacked up. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So if you are well stacked as a woman, mm-hmm. then you are you are 
and well endowed. Mm. Okay, <laughs> you're well endowed mm. um, uh, physically. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's something on you to hold. Mm -hmm. Good. So that is on a lighter note. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but um, um, if we want to speak um, seriously, yeah. Um, imagine seeing a, um, a pile of books, mm -hmm. which is described as being a neat stack of books. Mm -hmm. Now let's relate that to to the woman. So it should be a woman who is orderly, mm. who is neat, mm -hmm. okay, who is um, together, mm -hmm. well put together, and together in the way she goes about things. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we can take it a step further and also say that um, to stack up is also tantamount to saying something adds up. Okay, so something makes sense. <laughs> so if we're looking at women, and we are, then I think what we should be asking ourselves as women, are we making sense? The way that we run our, our lives, you know, does it make sense? Do we know exactly what we're doing and, and where we're going? It, does it add up? So I, I think that would be my, my way of talking about women or woman stack up. Thank you very much. Very interesting perspective right there. I didn't expect anything else. And by the way, you are well stacked up. Fully, <laughs> fully stacked up. Um, this conversation is taking a life of its own and is running away. So I'm going to quickly open the lines for you to call in, text us, or uh, by SMS or WhatsApp. And the number to use is 913 Six thousand four one zero. Please call in and let's engage. It's not every day we get Bimbo in the studio. I'm um, sitting on the seat. She's sitting on now. She's always the one doing the interview. But this time around, we are interviewing her. Mm -hmm. So please call in and let's engage her the way she grills other people. Okay, back to you now. So today we'll be focusing on stacking up on her stories or she stories, if you like. Mm -hmm. You know. So for most of history, Anonymous was a woman. Uh, women didn't have the platform nor the place to be able to tell their own stories so mm. we only listen to his stories you know so but you are a woman and you have several platforms so how are you telling your story what are you doing with your platforms hmm well um i suppose i've done a variety of things um um over the years and uh, quite honestly initially i never thought of those things uh, in terms of telling stories. Mm -hmm. I was just doing things that I felt like doing. But um, there, there is something that um, I did for several years, which actually was not included in your, uh, in your introduction. Mm -hmm. um, I ran a supermarket. See, when I first, when I first uh, left uh, the NTA, when mm -hmm. I first stopped, shall I say, regular broadcasting. Mm -hmm. There was a period of time when my children were growing up that I decided to do something else. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted my time to be mine. So um, I was assisting my husband with the production company, but I was also running a supermarket in the estate where I lived. And during those years, I had a very interesting time because I, I had an opportunity to actually um, find out how women lived. Mm. You know, many of the customers, uh, my customers at the time, became, became my friends. So we would have a lot of conversations about different things. And I, and I got to learn so many things about, about women. And that led me to, shall I say, the next platform of telling stories. Uh, because it wasn't... Um, long after that well although i ran the, the supermarket for about maybe 10 12 years oh, wow. but then i um uh, my friends and i um well i think i i was the initiator but i invited three friends to join me um we had a program on uh, on the tv called crystal um it was called crystal a magazine program for women mm. and what we did was to um look at different issues um, and um, feature women uh, who were doing very well in their various areas. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was during the course of discovering that women had many, many issues that they were, that they were battling, that they were dealing with. That now led me to establish an NGO. 
So that NGO was called Women's Optimum Development Foundation. Okay. Okay. And so I now had a different platform to tell different yes. stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deeper stories. Deeper <laughs> stories. Yes, because you know, I, 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 it's like I collected the stories initially mm -hmm. whilst talking to my customers. Mm -hmm. I then went on to uh, to the program Crystal, mm -hmm. where we delved. Uh, a little deeper mm -hmm. into those stories and aspects and then came uh, WODEF which is the the acronym for the NGO that I established at the time mm -hmm. and I was able to partner with um, <clears throat> a variety of uh, funding agencies to now tell you know uh, uh, stories via radio drama mm -hmm. TV drama mm -hmm. um, um, I organized some workshops as well and I, I think during that time, uh, things like uh, uh, the inclusion of women in uh, in politics, things like gender-based uh, violence, violence, these were the kind of things like corruption. These were the the kinds of uh, of aspects that um, I I you worked on, them. and uh, yes, so stories were told in uh, in 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 those ways. Um, yeah, so. And then, you know, within the lifespan of, of WODEF, because it's, it's not running uh, any longer, but within that lifespan, um, there was a, an award ceremony which um, we established. Um, interestingly, uh, in Crystal, there was a segment called Rare Gems. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of um, took that forward and called this the Rare Gems Award. Oh. So now this Rare Gems Award featured um, uh, women and men actually who he were, for she's. who were making yes uh, very very constructive contributions towards the development of, of women woman. and um, over that period it, at that time it was the MDGs so for 15 years um, within that 15 years um, I think we, we gave out about a hundred awards oh, we beautiful. had about 10 ceremonies and um, you know um, we were able to to do that so the stories as i said i really never thought of it in terms of telling stories mm -hmm. but if you if you want to look at it from that perspective then um i think i've told quite a few yes <laughs> I, I think you have too <laughs> it's quite impressive what you've just um shared with us mm -hmm. i'm really very impressed you know and i mean it's to be expected because looking at your bio your bio is very impressive it is like a well scripted story <laughs> <laughs> well we're all stories aren't we? we're all stories in, in in progress yes, yes we are nobody quite knows how the story will end and, but yeah. yeah so congratulations on all you have achieved so far ma thank you um if you must know we consider you one of those who have set the stage for the woman to just keep being able to say her story to share and all of that mm, well, thank but you, you see that. when you look at everything you've said now it looked like it was busy breezy no challenges did you have any challenges? Oh, yes. You know, because right now we're all bogged down with crises in, in the world and everything. Mm. And it's like everybody is just facing one challenge or the other. So we would like to know, did you face any challenges and how did you overcome them? Yes, I think there were quite a few challenges. I mean, um, there was always the challenge of balancing home and work. Every woman's everybody, nightmare. Everybody goes through that. Okay? Every woman's nightmare. Yes, and, and then I discovered that, you know, sometimes I had to, I had to give up certain things mm. because I felt that um, aspects of family life were more important. Yeah. Another challenge I think uh, I've probably had um, from time to time um, when members of the family have been ill, mm -hmm. um, I had to balance work and, you know, looking after them is quite a challenge. Um, there are some kinds of illnesses that um, they are not pleasant for the person who is ill, but for the caregiver, it, it really stretches you to your limit. Um, and still, you have to be on air. You still have to say, you know, welcome, good evening, you know, here is the news, whatever it is that you say. Um, so that has, uh, that has been a challenge. Uh, but by the grace of God, one has, uh, has been able to overcome such challenges. But sure, they have existed. You know, I totally understand what you mean by caregiving. It's a very, very 
burdensome task. Mm. And then to now have such a challenge and still go stand in front of the TV screen to say, <laughs> good evening, Nigerians. <laughs> My name is Bimbo Loyede. Mm. That must take a lot of inner strength. Well, um, yes. It does, actually. You have to understand who you are mm. and uh, and why you're doing what you do. Women, I hope you're listening. <laughs> I hope you are truly listening because what she's just shared here now is a very, very salient nugget. <laughs> in spite of what is going on in your life, you show up. You show up, and the only way you show up is by understanding who you are. The phone lines are still open, so please endeavor to call in and be part of the show. The number to call is 0913-6000-410. Yeah? So looking at all your diverse interests, I didn't even know about the supermarket angle and all of that. <laughs> um, one might be tempted to say you have pies in many places. Hmm. Do you now, looking back, see a connecting dot in all of what you were doing? Oh, we've got a call coming in. Good morning. This is up here with AZ Name. I know who's calling and where you're calling from. Thank you to the guests in the studio. Wonderful guests. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Queen Ojo from my two. Okay, Queen. Queen, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I want to appreciate the powerful guest. She's teaching thank a you. lot of things. I'm learning a lot of things from her. Thank you. Yeah, thank I keep you. on listening. I just want to say hi and appreciate her for job well done. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Queen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yes, I think um, the dots really began when I was young mm. because um, once I was at school, I was very interested in speech and drama. I used to take elocution lessons. So at the time when um, I was uh, employed at the then NBC TV, I was actually in the drama department. Mm. It was, um, I would say, by accident that I was um, invited to, well, not invited, it was an instruction, actually. Mm. Uh, my boss just called me and said, look, we're going uh, network tomorrow. Um, women are going to be reading news with men now. So whatever African outfit you have, please just bring it because tomorrow you are on. Oh, wow. Now, prior to that, I had done something, uh, one or two programs, um, eulogizing the uh, the late uh, head of state at the time, um, General Murtala Mohammed. Hmm. So I didn't know then that they were looking for female faces and voices. Okay, so when I was given that instruction um, and I um, obeyed and, you know, reported for duty the next day with my African dress, and I had a big Afro at, uh, in those days, so my African dress and my big Afro, and um, you know, I read the news with the late uh, Onwa uh, Ike Nandagupa. Um, mm. So the, the, the time that I had spent going through those elocution lessons led me, or connected, if you like, to my reading the news. Because I did not go through the usual channels of training at the FRCN uh, training school, okay? So that dot connected to, to that, okay? So after um, speaking, uh, after reading the news for a little while, I began to get invitations to MC occasions, you know, here and there. So the casting of the news was the dot that led to being invited to be an MC, okay? Um, and then whilst I was running the supermarket, um, people were, I suppose, a little bit... Um, maybe more interested um, in uh, wondering why this former news caster or news anchor was now running a supermarket. So I began, you know, having discussions with them. And if you connect the dots of that to um, the program Crystal, when the program Crystal was on, I was also, I was invited at that time because we're looking at a space of maybe 16, 17 years, okay? So I was then invited to um, train. From the training and from the program Crystal, I think perhaps the chairman of uh, uh, Channels TV, mm -hmm. perhaps he saw the program Crystal. And at that time, he had already uh, invited one or two people um, 
former colleagues of his from uh, NTA to take some bulletins. So maybe it occurred to him that, oh, why, you know, she used to, why, why, maybe she'd be interested. Mm -hmm. So when that invitation came, I was thinking to myself, because at that point, it was now 22 years mm. since I had stopped reading the news or casting news on NTA. Mm -hmm. And I was asking myself, what would I be doing coming back? But then, as I said, I was training. And people would ask me uh, about the use of the teleprompter. Now, at the time when I started, we did not have a teleprompter. Mm. So I had no idea how to use a teleprompter. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, OK, if I'm being asked certain questions, I need to know the answers. Exactly. So when the invitation came, I then said, well, I'm not sure if I can still do it, but uh, OK, let's let's try. So. Uh, Mr. Momo said, uh, well, now Dr. Momo, he said, well, come and do an audition. So I went, I did the audition. He said, oh, can you start today? I said, no, I cannot start today. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, um, um, my main reason, I think, at the time for accepting was because I wanted to be able to answer the questions that, you were asked. that I was asked by participants Spons in various training trainings, programs. Yeah. yeah. So everything has been connected and connected fantastically you know the way you say you were instructed to wear your best african dress <laughs> and come read the news yeah you know i've been wowed as in this is the lady that cast the first nta news as a woman that's history making mm, and well. the, and and it was Oh, a call is coming in. Oh, just when I was making... Okay, go ahead. Good morning. Up here with Ezine. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Up here with Ezine. You're speaking with Toby from Yaba. Okay, Toby, how are you today? Yeah, it's nice listening to Mrs. Bimbo really day. But um, I'd like to ask her a question. Please Hello, go ahead. You know, as how a young... are you? Fine, thank you. So, as a young lady growing up, before you got married, I... I get the fact that you explained about your challenges when you were married. But as a young lady, or you were single, were there any challenges? Well, was life just smooth, or you were just meeting opportunity, or you were, or opportunities were just meeting you? It was just smooth, no challenge or anything. I'd like to hear your life about when you were single and then how you rose up high. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. So, over to you. <laughs> yes, well, uh, there were challenges also, actually, when, um, uh, when I was uh, young and single. You know, first of all, it was, uh, it was a phenomenon. Um, people were, were, were not used to seeing um, uh, women uh, newscasters you know, in those days. So that became um, a, a, a quite something. Um, at, at a certain point, you know, it became a little bit difficult to go to certain places because um, when you were recognized, sometimes... Um, the farms. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you had to be on your best behavior mm. anyway. Mm. Um, you couldn't just forget yourself and um, do what you like, say what you like. You, you had to behave in a particular, in a particular way. But I think the, the main challenge probably would have been the fact that in those days we were under military rule. And so we had to be careful about what was being broadcast, mm -hmm. you know, at that time. More careful than, than you have to be now. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, you would have uh, phone calls from military officers um, asking about uh, different things that were broadcast. So that was sometimes a bit of a challenge. Um, but if you had a boss who was um, willing to stand in the gap for us, he would answer those questions and just tell the military authorities, look, leave my people alone. Anything you want to know, ask, um, me. ask me, you know. Sometimes we got let because, you know, there wasn't anything like uh, the Internet was not uh, um, available in those days. So uh, we used to get letters. Mm -hmm. um, we would get letters from people. Sometimes uh, those letters were warm and friendly sometimes they were a little bit uh, some of them could be a bit nasty mm -hmm. you know they could say things that were not uh, particularly um, uh, acceptable depending on whatever their perspective uh, might be but um, generally for us we, we we had a job to do and and we did it
Thank you. Toby, I hope that gives you some perspective. Um, what I hear from all you've said is <clears throat> trust your journey. Woman, trust your journey. The dots will certainly connect. Hmm. Because, I mean, um, this bio, like I said, re- is like a very well scripted story. But <laughs> from what you've explained, the dots were connecting. Hmm. So from one thing to the other. If yes. she wasn't good with her spoken English, she wouldn't have been asked to read the news. If she didn't read the news, she wouldn't have been asked to come and MC. Just be good at what you're doing and trust your journey. Good morning, up you with Azine. Good morning. Morning. Who is calling and where yeah. are you calling from? My name is Angel Ongo. I'm coming in from Ikeja. Okay, good morning, good Angel. Morning, good, morning. good morning to your guest in the house. Good morning, Angel. How are you? Good morning, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question for you. It bothers us uh, what I've been bothered about recently. Mm. So, um, evidently, you had walked through the regime that we consider a very tough one, and you were a government worker and then um, trying to merge your work on um, the home front. Mm. I would like to know how you were able to merge the two simultaneously, that uh, you were able to work seamlessly. Because it's been a bit of a challenge for me, merging the home front and um, <laughs> the work from mm. seamlessly. So um, I want to hear from you. Thank you, Angel. Are you a government worker? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. I think um, in the first instance, uh, depending on the kind of job that you do, well, irrespective, actually, of the kind of work that you do, I think you need to have a husband that understands the nature of your work. Um, That will help. Because in my case, for instance, I, I would close at, um, initially when I worked for the NTA, I would close at 10 o'clock. When I started reading the news at uh, uh, channels, anchoring the news there, I would close at 11, which meant I didn't get home until midnight. Now, um, as I said, you have to have, I think, a, a man who understands the type of work that you do because whether you like it or not um, he would have to be of assistance in one way or another then I think you have to have a, a system at home that works you have to have people who can help you to do certain things when you are not there and it's not just having a system that works it's it's it is having is putting structures into place so that you have an idea of what your children are doing at any you know, given point in time. Well, you may not, because you, you, you don't have eyes at the back of your head, so you may not be able to, 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 to have a complete picture of what is going on at home, but at least you would have made an effort to ensure that certain things are done at certain times. So that would be another um, way of the apparent uh, seamless gelling of work and and home. But I think more than that, I think you also have to be able to decide at certain points in your life what is the most important thing. Because I remember there was a time when I was expecting a child, the offer was made for me to go abroad and do a six month uh, course of study um, in a university um, somewhere in America. And I looked at this thing and I said, look, this is, um, this is a fantastic offer. But looking at my own reality, is it something that I can really do now? I have one child at home. I have a mother who is busy doing her own thing and I'm not quite sure whether I would be able to just leave my child and disappear for six months especially since I'm expecting another one okay so when I have this other one now where would I even have the child will I have the child abroad or will I have the child (laughs) in uh, in Nigeria so I looked at the whole situation and I 
declined. I said, I, I'm, I'm happy that you've, you know, this offer has been made, but I don't think I can take it. I know that some people thought I was crazy, but, uh, well, I don't think I was crazy. I think that what I did at that time was the, I felt it was the right thing to do. So sometimes I think we also have to understand that certain sacrifices may need to be made so that the bigger picture you know, is, uh, is, is a wholesome one. So that purpose will be achieved. Yes. Yes. So, so I think that's what I would say. Women, we need to keep first things first in everything that we do. Whatever your situation is, let first things be first things. Um, okay, so now, Bimbo, strictly speaking, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that phrase. Okay. You've, you've totally owned it made two books out of it mm-hmm. and established a, an academy around it mm. so it's obvious that you're passionate about it you're passionate about people speaking well yes <laughs> i am i hope i'm passing the test <laughs> <laughs> you are thank you uh-huh. okay so i ask my next question gallantly <laughs> so what do you think about the trendy way millennials speak now and write as well and how has it been training them for the industry it is very clear that um, I belong to a different generation mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, speech trends but I think that if we are going to be professionals mm-hmm. I think that there is a certain standard that we should um, we should maintain mm-hmm. And this is because people are listening to us and, you know, young people especially are are learning or they're supposed to be learning from us. We as broadcasters are supposed to be role models. So if we're going to utilize all the slangs, if we're going to write in a, you know, in a funny way, if we're going to speak in a way that indicates clearly that the grammar is wrong. I don't know what is trendy or modern about that. It is either right or wrong in my own, you know, estimation. So I have no quarrel with uh, our broadcasters uh, using slangs, um, speaking um, their own way when they're amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. But I will say this though, because I have seen it happen on several occasions. Now, if you and I were having a conversation before we came on air, mm-hmm. and we were having this conversation, let's say in Pidgin English, mm-hmm. and then we now came on air to have a conversation in regular English, mm-hmm. there is no way that at some point in time, we one of us will slip. And that Pidgin, that we have been using <laughs> to communicate will come true. it will come out one way or another so i think we should choose the times and the spaces when we want to speak in a carefree manner let's decide where that dis- uh, conversation will take place so that it does not affect us professionally when we are actually on air yeah that's also like being mindful eh mindfulness oh yes you know I read somewhere back in the days that there was something like a green room where you go to to get your thoughts together, gather yourself, prepare before you go on stage, you know, for whatever it is that you need to do. But I don't think we have all that now. So somebody could just rush in from traffic and say, oh, boy, now I'll be like, I don't late. Make we just start. <laughs> okay. it is, it, look, it sounds funny, but I tell you, it is very, very possible. Yes, <laughs> I can imagine how that, how, how that can happen. <laughs> okay, let's run because time is um, beginning to beep and say that we need to be rounding up. Okay. Uh, so every generation has their story of uh, in our good old days, mm. you know. I've even started telling a few to my children <laughs> in the good old days. And I'm like, but I was complaining in those days. Eh? So I'm sure you have your own good old days story. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, maybe... A good old day story. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it is a story, but I do think that in the past there were certain values that we had. Mm-hmm. Um, um, my mother 
passed on certain values to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I watched her as I was uh, growing up. I, I I saw the example that she set, mm -hmm. which for me is like saying that um, that was her story. Mm -hmm. Okay, she passed on those things to me, those values to me, ideals and principles. And I, I tried, and I'm still trying, <laughs> to pass on some of those uh, values and ideals to my own children. Can, so, can you please give me an example of a value you got from your mother and one that you're passing on to your children and possibly grandchildren right now? Same value same that has value. remained timeless, yes. The way you treat people. Mm -hmm. That somebody is a helper or a servant mm -hmm. or uh, or an assistant mm -hmm. um, does not give you the right to speak to them any way you like. You must respect people. Um, but of course, usually, you, you need to respect yourself first. If you can respect yourself... Because then you can't give what you don't have. Precisely. So you respect others. And so... You don't treat them anyhow. You don't. You don't abuse. You don't. You're not unnecessarily rude. You have to be courteous. You have to extend good manners. Those things are. They're. They're important. People must be made to feel that they are also human beings. Because they are not the job they do. They are human beings. They the are job they do beings. is just the job they do. Exactly. And you don't even know what they're going to be tomorrow. Or where they will be tomorrow. Thank you. That's a real good one out there. That's a real good value that you're passing on to your kids and your grandkids. Mm. So now, uh, there's still a whole lot I would like to ask you about. Time is not our friend. <laughs> so I'm going to just say to you, what's been your most memorable interview so far in the four decades that you've been in broadcasting, journalism and all of that? And also, I'm going to tell you, um, I'm going to say, as you're doing that, please wrap up nicely on this conversation by advising and encouraging the woman out there who wishes to make a career in broadcasting or journalism but doesn't know where to start from. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. Yes. <clears throat> Time. All right. Okay. So <laughs> let's try and do this very quickly. Yes, ma'am. The most memorable discussion. Mm. I'm going to say discussion because it was not actually within the four walls of a studio. Okay. The most memorable discussion I had was with a lady who was um, employed to be a chaperone, mm. a French woman. Um, and I had this conversation with her in France when she got married. Her husband said to her, please, can you stay home and look after the children and help me in my career? And by the time our last child is going to university, whatever it is you want to do, you are free to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you sure that I will be free to do what I want you to do? Yes, believe me, you know, I'll keep my word. And so she did. The last child, when the last child was going to university, she asked the question, can I now do what I want to do? He said, fine, go ahead. Apparently, during that time, during those years, he had been moving from country to country. Mm -hmm. And as she moved from country to country, she learned the languages. That is how she came to be a government chaperone. Wow. So after staying at home for all those years, she now was given a car by the French government mm -hmm. and she was the kind of people that she was taking around Paris were sheikhs, were ministers. Sitting but, with kings and kingmakers. Absolutely. Because as she moved from place to place, rather than just sitting, she decided that she would also spend the time to learn different languages. Mm. And so, and I have never forgotten that discussion that I had with her. Just, never. Just like I will never forget now. Yeah. So, for young broadcasters, uh, if you want to come into this profession, come into it for the right reason. I get it. I know that it is a stepping stone to bigger and wider and greater things. But that should not be your main reason. Your main reason should be that this is a profession that, that you met. And, and people made it what it is. So you should come in, add your own value. If you want to stay, fine. If you want to go, go. But just make sure that you add value to it and that you give of your best to it so that in future you will also get the best out of it. But that you are coming because you want people to know your name, you want people to know your voice, you want people to know your face, 
that would be the wrong mindset. <sighs> if this was all you said on this show, it would have been worth it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bimbo, for coming. You're welcome. Uh, we have learned quite a lot from you today. You see that story about that woman? Mm. That right there is what every woman should take. That you're staying at home or that you're taking lesser jobs than you're qualified for or whatever at the moment yep. doesn't stop you from having those grand dreams mm -hmm. and planning for the time that the last child flies the nest. Nothing stops you. You can you, have it all. Yes. You can. But I, you can't have it all at the same time. Thank you. This is what I've been preaching. You can, A woman can actually have it all. And time. I wish all of you could see Bimbo. She's um, all of 60 what? Eight. Eight. And she looks like she's 16. Oh. You know, the, the, <laughs> truth, the truth is time. Time is not like we see it, women. We need to be patient. Do the first things first. Do the right things. And then just get ready to reap the rewards of uh, everything. Stories help us make sense of the world. You see, she's told us stories today that has helped us. I am certain someone was blessed today. And that is because she has shared willingly. She's been stacking up and she's told us all the stories. And we're going to use it today and also for posterity. Woman, do not let anything stop you from stacking up your life. Who knows? It may be the roadmap the next generation needs to navigate. Do and be better. Do not rob yourself and all of us of the contribution you can make for now and the future. Trust me, your story matters. Stack it. So this is where we wrap up today's edition of Up You With Ezine. It's been another amazing one. Please follow us on all our social media handles at Up You With Ezine. Get copies of our books. Up you and when adversity strikes, fight. Thank you. Big up to everyone that is involved in creating this magic every week. Starting with you, our dear listeners, our special guest, our advertisers, callers, the engineers on duty, my handsome producer, the amazing Up You team, 98.3 Mainland FM, the sound of Lagos. You all stay strong, stay blessed, stay lifted. My name is until I come your way next week, it's up you, up you, and up you.